Khan Arif. Can you please tell me about why Allah accepts repentance? A man who worships for Allah in whole life and a man who denies to worship will be in the same category after repentance. So the question asked by Brother Khan Arif, isn't it illogical that a man who worshipped Allah for the full life and there's a man who doesn't worship Allah, he does seek his full life and towards the end of his life he repents. So will they be on the same level, isn't it illogical? What you have to understand that if there's a person who has understood the deen and from day one is a Muslim, he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he worships him throughout his life whereas the other person who is doing shirk and does not worship Allah and towards the end of his life he accepts Islam and he repents the problem is in the first case the person who understands Allah is at an advantage no one knows when a person is going to die how long he is going to live the other person who is doing shirk maybe till the age of 50-60 now how does he know that he is going to survive till the age of 50 or 60? So if for me, of course the person who worships Allah the full life is of course more safer bet. That's a different question. That at the age of 60, the person accepts Islam. Now once he accepts Islam, all his previous sins are washed away. Now this person is doing ibadah. If he's done ibadah, his ibadah is positive. He has not done any sin. So you cannot say that both will be on the same level. A person who worships Allah with ikhlas and khulus, with taqwa, his full life, he is, been, he is getting many positive points. So at the age of 60, if he is worshipping Allah, maybe most of his life after he became an adult, the other person is, being, is sinning. And at the age of 60, he accepts Islam. At that given time, yes, the person who accepts Islam is sinless. But the person who has been worshipping Allah for the last 50 to 60 years is at an advantage. Because besides he not committing sin, he is on a higher level because he has worshipped Allah. And a person who worships Allah, he always asks for forgiveness. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad he says in a hadith that he used to ask forgiveness minimum 70 times a day. So, if the mushrik is being forgiven, even the person who is an abid, a person who is doing ibadah, even he is being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because however much good human being you are, the bound to be you will commit some of the other sins. So, this nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of forgiving most merciful is beneficial for everyone. Now just because somebody else Allah puts in Jannah, Allah is not at all taking anything away from you. So when you are worshipping Allah, there is bound to be you may be doing certain minor sins or certain sins even though you are worshipping Him. And, and you as a good Abid, you may be asking for forgiveness. For so Allah even forgives you. So it's benefit for both. It's not only one-sided. And just because somebody else also is put into Jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why should you feel bad? You should be bothered as long as you are put in Jannah. If Allah says, okay, fine, I will not forgive both. Our Prophet said, no human being can enter Jannah only because of his deeds. So the Sahaba said, what about you Prophet? He said, even I. Means even the Prophet, if he has to enter Jannah only because of his deeds, he cannot. The best exemplary human being in the world. He says, we can only enter Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only if Allah wants and Allah forgives you, if Allah is Rahman or Rahim. So that means, you fail to realize that besides forgiving that non-Muslim who are doing shirk the full life, Allah forgives them, Allah is also forgiving you. Because you know human being only on his deed can enter Jannah. It has to be with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He being of forgiving, both merciful. Hope that's the question.